In this example, I'm going to show you how we can evaluate data to see if there's collinearity. And the easiest way to, to do this is to show you how, what it is and how it's done. Now, if you look at this universal bank data set, you'll notice that the outcome variable here, I just label it beginning with Y because it just makes it easier for you to see, has zeros and ones. So those that did not take on a personal loan have zero, and those that did take on it have a one. Now, if you look over here in the, the data model that is here, this is showing that it's a nominal variable. Even though these are numbers, it's shown as a nom nominal variable, and this is correct because this is actually a binary outcome. Even though these are numbers, these are just numbers that are really names for categories. And so, but what we'd really like to do is we'd like to be able to see if some of these other numeric variables have a positive or negative and strong and weak relationship with the outcome variable and with each other, because that helps us be able to identify what might be going on in the data. So to do that, uh, you cannot take something that's a categorical variable and put it in a correlation matrix. So temporarily, what we can do is just flip it and change it from a nominal to a continuous right here. Now you can see that this has the icon for continuous. So now when we go in to create our correlation matrix, we'll be able to do that. So I'm going to analyze and multivariate, multivariate. And this allows us now to be able to put all the variables that are numeric variables into this y val this y column area including and we're going to make sure that this is first because it just kind of lines up everything in the analysis makes everything a lot easier to see but we're not going to put in id and zip code we know that id is just a unique identifier and zip code is not going to help us in what we're trying to accomplish in this data set so i'm unclicking these and we'll just leave the outcome variable and all of the other valid numeric predictor variables or input variables and so we'll put these in the Y, and then we'll hit OK. Now, if you look at this, you'll notice that in terms of what might be correlated or what is has a correlation with the outcome variable, there actually are some good uh, correlations here. We have these are promising and suggest that we're going to have some information helping us on some of these variables uh, in terms of helping us be able to predict who is going to take on these personal loans and which customers are not. And so that's encouraging. But another important thing to notice is the strong correlation between age and experience. This is so high that it's essentially saying that age and experience are the same thing. It's, it's no surprise necessarily that age and experience would be correlated. And so really what's happening is that we have two variables that are so related, that are so much expressing the same information that they can confuse the model, they can confuse the algorithms as they go in and try to examine what's going on. In fact, some data mining tools, if you have such a high correlation, they will actually not even run because it makes the math uh, go crazy. And so, uh, so when you have a, kind of a general rule of thumb is that if you have a correlation that's 0.75 or greater, and that's less than a negative 0.75, that's a negative relationship, or greater than a positive 0.75, then you have collinearity. And the rule of thumb is, is that you want to keep the variable that has the strongest relationship with the outcome variable. So let's look at this. So age right now has a negative 0.077, and then age is related to experience, and its relationship with the outcome is a little tiny bit weaker than age is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of experience because it will confuse the algorithm. And so we're going to just drop experience from this. But we have an issue now is we need to get this Y person alone back to categorical. Otherwise, we'll, the wrong sort of analysis will ensue. And so neither logistic regression or KNN will do the right type of analysis if we leave this as a continuous variable. So I'm going to fix this now. I'm going to go back over and I'm going to back to person alone and I'm going to flip this over to nominal. So there you see this sort of categorical icon here, and so we've turned this back. And now, when I go in and do my modeling, we know that we're going to not only drop out ID and zip code, but we're also going to drop out experience because it would confuse the model, and then we can proceed on with our modeling.